Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and I gotta set the stage for you a little bit on this one. Everyone likes to see old boxes, right? And so a lot of you have been to coin shops and you think it's the coolest thing ever to work at a coin shop. But if you've been around a long time, you realize there is a lot of repetitiveness and mundanity. Mundanity is not a word, maybe it's not a word, I don't know. And um, you know, over and over again, you gotta tell people, no, the Google is wrong, the internet's not right. And then uh, occasionally you get something that's just kind of fun or different to go through. And uh, I just want to set the stage a little bit for this collection that we're going to take a peek at. And I want you to just kind of think about what we're seeing here because what's fun for me when I see old collections is when you look at old holders. Now, first of all, most of these holders are purchase dates 1914. And you know they've got the really cool um, old quill ink pen handwriting. You know the old ink uh, that you'll see, and it has the coins description on it. One of the things to notice is that this is from 1914, and you look at you see these envelopes have not really changed over time, right? And of course, when you get envelopes like these, it's a little bit like a box of chocolates, and you just never know exactly what you're going to get. So uh, something that I'm really not surprised by is when you see coins like these and they're just kind of low grade. Uh, 1914 to 1874, one of the things I want you to think about is the time capsule factor that most of these coins to us, you know, they're as old as they are, hundreds of years old, 100 and, oh, 150 year old coins basically, right? 1873, but when this guy bought these in 1914, Imagine if you bought a coin from the 1960s today, right? That was kind of the time difference for this person who was buying these coins. And uh, just look how much wear is on them. Uh, how different that is from what we go through today in our, with our, current, our coins and our currency. Of course, I realize that someone in the future is watching this and just drooling and thinking, what are coins? Wow. You know, is that what they had before they had the digital coin, the digital dollar, right? So, so think about think about that. You know, the time period during which these were collected. All right, I, I found that to be really kind of an interesting way of thinking about some of this stuff. All right. In the meantime, let's look at a few of the coins here. So this person was kind of, well, I don't know if they were just kind of all over the place with the, what they were collecting. They weren't going for anything high grade. It looks like they were just kind of collecting coins they liked, right? Uh, one of the other things I want to point out to you is whenever you look at a collection like this, what it does for you is it gives you an opportunity to see how coins come that have been stored so somewhere for 100 years, right? You see this little blue tinge that's on the edges of the coin. Now, this coin clearly has some type of other environmental damage going on. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, you can actually join our group called Environmental Damage. But you'll see that same kind of toning to the edges of this coin. This has a little bit of an orange and blue around it. And that is undoubtedly from the way the coin interacted with this paper. Now the paper is of course not in any way acid free. So he also collected quarters, a little bit of everything here, also from 1914. We'll go through and we'll see some coins here that are not from 1914. Uh, that were purchased in dates after that. Um, this supposedly is an 1856 large O, but the large O variety actually is like, it looks like someone took a Cheerio and stuck it on the back of the coin. This is not the, uh, the large O that you're looking for when it comes to that variety. All right, let me go through and grab another coin or two to show to you. Now we get into the barber coins, and this is where I got really fascinated really quickly because once again you have coins that are <clears throat> only a decade old. And so I think, okay, a decade old barber quarter. And I'm expecting to see something with some detail on it. Once again, you see that same kind of toning that almost gives it a reflective look to it. Now, of course, if you send that in to get graded, there's a pretty good chance they're just going to call that environmental damage. But that is what original toning on a well-circulated coin looks like. Now, mind you, most coins that are this worn 
do not have any type of re reflectivity or toning to them. So it's very unusual to see something like that. But you'll see this this barber is just like a, a VG type coin. And uh, <laughs> welcome to the world of collecting barbers. If you want a real challenge, uh, you know some of the rarest coins you can try to collect grade-wise are middle grade, middle grade barbers, so like very fines. So this is also something that was a little frustrating as I go through this collection. So I'm, I'm looking at these things, and here's 1914, a 1903, 10-year-old, 10-year-old coin, right? Ooh, they used the the cellophane, the the paper. This is going to be a super high-grade coin. You know, you just can't wait to see how nice the coin is inside. And then you look and you realize, okay, well, I mean, technically it's a little nicer. Oh, look, we can actually see part of the headdress, um, you know, part of the laurel wreath on the head. One of the other things you'll see when you talk about storing coins here is, you know, you're getting spotting on here, and that's actually something that was kept in cellophane. And that cellophane didn't really do what they thought it would do. You can see a little bit of the E Pluribus Unum on there. So just a little bit more detail, but 10 years of circulating, right? 10 years of circulating, and that thing's already almost gone. All right, so also this collection did have silver dollars. And so it's interesting because also 10 year old silver dollar. And so, you know, in your mind, you're thinking this coin should be well preserved. And it is, a, it is a middle grade. It's a nice looking coin. So nothing wrong with this coin here. It is kind of a nice middle VF. But just you know, think about how quickly these coins wore down. And we don't think about that all the time when we get a coin. You know, we just kind of assume, because especially on Morgan dollars, there are so many high grade Morgan dollars available that we don't really think about the fact that that these coins, when they circulated, they wore pretty quick. You know, you know, you don't really consider it when you think about when you think about the coins that you collect, just how quickly those coins actually wore down. All right, let's find something that's a little bit older dollar in here and see what it looks like. 18, sorry, this one's 1880. Nolens. And once again, of course, this coin has a similar amount of wear to it. From the New Orleans Mint. You know, just a nice middle grade, high end VF, you know, middle grade VF, VF 25, something like that. Now, you would think that eventually you'd find coins that he collected from that time period. Here's another one from uh, 1902, another Morgan dollar, another middle grade Morgan dollar. Nice original middle grade coin, by the way. Kind of fun. So eventually, as I'm going through here, we do find some coins that are near to the actual date of collecting, right? So you'll find some coins later in this group that are, um, you know, this is not labeled the same, Silver Dollar 1921, uh, Morgan type, Liberty Head, and you would think it would be pretty high grade. Now this coin actually isn't too worn, but oh my, oh my, oh dinosaurs, look at that bad boy. That is some um, green. That is some green. So when people talk about cleaning coins versus like restoration, preservation, this coin needs some TLC. Now of course it's not the type of coin that you'll necessarily want to spend some time or money to get to get restored because it's not a not an expensive coin, but my goodness, brutal, brutal what happened to that coin. So think about how you store your coins overall. Same thing we got here. We got a, a peace dollar type, 1922. It looks like he had a couple of them in here. And once again, these are coins that he got presumably shortly after circulation. Uh, this one, we don't know exactly. It doesn't have quite the same time capsule effect as the other one did. But, uh, you know, they're, they're circulated coins. Probably a, a low-end AU to a high-end XF, just looking at them at a glance. And, uh, but they're, they're things that didn't, didn't have to circulate much to look circulated. 
Now, occasionally you find something in a group like this that's kind of neat that he did get from change. This I already took out of the holder, sorry. You know, this 1916, not a D-dime, right? So he's like, everyone, hold your breath. 1916, and that is a San Francisco mint coin. You know, and it's rough because you get that combination of nice originality, but also, because these were in the paper also, you get this other stuff on the coins that's detrimental to the coin. So it might look nice and original. And so lots of people try to find that balance. They'll say, well, I don't ever want a coin that's been dipped or cleaned or, you know, preserved or whatever you want to call it. I just want an original. But the problem is, and, and by the way, I like a lot of original coins. I love the way these coins look right here, right? But when you have surface stuff on the coins, it's going to affect the coin long term. You know, the coin is not going to hold up over time, uh, not going to hold up well over time, right? So occasionally you get kind of a nice coin mixed in for something something like this. Occasionally you'll find a little bit better date. So once again, he bought this in 1914. He has this little purchase code that he uses. You know, I don't know if, if he was actually using this to for uh, an idea of who he purchased things from, which is what it says. Um, you know, here's your part for your price paid. Kind of a nice little accounting system that was built into these holders, by the way. But uh, 1893, Morgan Dollar, uh, lower grade coin and, you know, no mint mark, just a Philly, just a Philly. But 1893 is a tough date and just a nice even coin. Taking a quick look at that, you know, you're looking at a coin that's just kind of like a fine. And, uh, you know, once again, you have a little bit of dirt to the surface. That is something that you probably have to deal with in some fashion. You can sell it like that, which is fine, and I probably will. But anytime you have some of that dirt on there, your buyer is probably going to say, Hey, <laughs> that coin is dirty, man. I don't want your dirty coins. So here we go. This one has a different purchase date. October, I almost said 2016, 1916. So you have a Buffalo nickel. 1915s. Okay, so this is a year, a year after, a year after, right? 24 months later. And so finally, we get a combination of things here where you see a coin that's going to be a nice grade. You'll also see what this paper did to this coin as far as the overall toning and luster. So here is your S mint mark on there. Down at the bottom, of course, below the word five cents. And then the overall, the nickel looks really nice. You know, it is it is a little bit dull at a distance. And by that, I mean it actually, it's, it's really nice and lustrous, but it's not like blazing. You know, and once again, it has the thinnest layer of surface stuff on it that someone's going to have to decide, is that something that, it, you know, I never want to lose a patina. Let me make that straight. Like, I, if it has, something has a real nice original tone to it or patina, you don't want to lose it. But once again, for long-term storage, if it already has some type of surface problem to it, you know, how much of that do you want to have to deal with later down the line? Now, also, here's a 1913 Buffalo Nickel that he bought in 1915, right? And uh, this is undoubtedly... He got duped. This is probably, of course, means that it's a duplicate, that he has multiples of these. And once again, 1913s, these are nickels that you're going to see lots of them in high grade. We see these very frequently nice AU to unk coins. This coin, similar to the other one, has a nice original look to it. Another coin that uh, also has a lot of stuff going on on the surface of it. You know, that is something that's going to cause a problem down the road if you leave it on there. Especially nickel. I mean, nickel is nickel is a lot more reactive than silver is. So you want to be really careful with stuff like that. This one's fun. A 14S, also bought in, 20, in 1916. Not 2016, 1916. And this is a, a pretty decent coin. It does have some circulation to it. Uh, also, you see this has a almost a green hue to it. And that is all stuff that... Uh, that is from interacting with this envelope, and that is stuff that you don't want to see 
on your buffalo nickel. So this is definitely one that's a lot more likely, in my opinion, to need to be preserved. Preserved, conserved, whatever the term may be. Some of you don't like it. I understand. I understand that. Uh, got some more 1913 buffaloes. You can see this is a different envelope type, by the way, than the other one. And he had this labeled as uncirculated. And there's a few of these in here. Um, as long as I'm going through this, I should probably mention, I may just sell some of these as is. The toning on this coin just blew up my machine here. Look at that. So these also, now this is a nice iridescent tone to it, but you have these areas where it just gets funky because of the holder, right? You have that flat white look to it at, at the high points. But the coin itself, you know, it has a pretty cool tone to it. Nice original piece. I may put some of these on the website just with the holders as they came and just price them. We'll see, that That would be fun. I think maybe maybe we'll sell some of these things with the holders. Uh, you guys can comment on that if you wanna see some of those. Here you go, you get to see this 1913 that, that he bought in 1914. Same thing, more bright and shiny buffaloes. Similar look to it as the last one. You know, nice uncirculated, and you can see the tone is all there, but you can also see that at the same time that that there's something that's muting it at the same time. So it's bringing out these kind of cool, vibrant colors, but it's also muting it. So, you know, it's kind of a kind of a catch-22 on coins like that, in my opinion. A few more coins to look at because we didn't want to pass up the fact that there were a few dimes mixed in here that were kind of from the time period, right? 1915, 1914. 1916, 1916, right? So these should be 16, 17. These should be, you know, somewhat nice coins based on what he's saying, right? He says he got this as an unk coin from his description. And these are interesting because they are also heavy on the tone from being in the holders. And also coins that, man, I, I like the originality and also that that toning is, some of that stuff on the surface is not the right kind of stuff you want on the surface. It's not just a toning, it is, you know, some type of surface problem, right? Let's look at this 14S and just see how nice it is or is not. Most likely there, there might be a candidate or two in here for slabbing, but probably only with some conservation. Uh, a lot of a lot of your um, a lot of your coins from the early 19 teens and your smaller denominations don't have huge jumps unless you're in high high grade gem mint state. So some of your mint state coins that are either not a high grade gem mint, you know, they, a lot of them will be 100 200 dollar coins and then if you want to try to couple that with a conservation price, you're really looking at something that's hard to hard to do properly and make money at. So hard to come out on the positive side, which unfortunately, you know, I have to consider with what I do. Now, a lot of you don't care about that. A lot of you are like, hey, Ben, just go ahead. Let's just crack something else out. Get something else graded. Nobody cares. Um, go ahead, spend the money, buddy. Yeah, you all think I'm in Congress. All right, cool. So anyway, let me see if there's any last item in here that I feel like I missed to show you guys because I had a few things I wanted to, to just kind of drop in front of you and show you. And uh, yeah, so hey, sometimes it's fun to be a coin dealer, I'm not gonna lie. Occasionally we get to look at nice stuff, you know, and occasionally um, we have fun with it. Now, at the end of the day, we gotta figure out, now what are we gonna do with these coins? Um, you know, I know, I got a whole lot of you raising your hand, we're ready for donations, you're so generous. But uh, I will say that um, there's decisions to be made, because you get coins like this that is a nice unk coin, but has some surface debris to it that you can't, it would not, it would not certify as is. They will call that environmental damage, gang. All right, guys. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Leave your comments down below. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.